Tekon Kinkrit is simply unlike other anime. From its energetic art style to its erratic storytelling, Tekon Kinkrit seeks to challenge what we think we know about the art form. We don't wag our tails for anyone. <laughs> Similarly, the original manga subverted trends in its own medium and ushered in the startlingly new voice of one of Japan's most unusual authors who married traditional manga with a style inspired by the giants of Western comics. <laughs> with influences from Japan, France and even the United States, it's no surprise that Tekon Kinkrit became one of anime's most eclectic films to date. Today on Beyond Ghibli, I'm taking a closer look at the treasure of treasure time. <laughs> Come on, White. It's playtime. It only takes a glance to recognise that anime and manga have a mould, and if you spend any length of time with either, you'll realise few titles are willing to break free from it. Masaaki Yuasa is an anime director who's proven that defying tradition can result in spectacular movies, and his parallel in the world of manga is a man named Taiyo Matsumoto, an artist whose work instantly stands out in an oversaturated market of homogenous art. These auteurs found common ground in distancing themselves from mass appeal, and fittingly Yuasa has adapted one of Matsumoto's works, Ping Pong, into a popular animated show that plays to both of their strengths. There's a reason for Matsumoto's deviation. At an early age, he travelled to France to study art and became infatuated with the comics he found there. This experience had a huge impact on his style, and when he returned to Japan to work on manga, he did so with a dramatically different look. He uses this style to zero in on a theme that spans his entire portfolio. Loneliness. About being misunderstood. About being weird. Likewise, on any given manga bookshelf, his work has no chance of fitting in. His thin, spindly, strange drawings buck every trend imaginable. Surrounded by the saccharine, the melodramatic and the relentlessly serialised works of his peers, his books end up being as lonely as their protagonists. Through his works, which are so often about children escaping to their imagination, Matsumoto holds up a critical lens to the real world, and his unflinching appraisal of humanity is often damning. Themes such as abandonment, isolation and abuse run rampant, and Matsumoto points the finger at us and says that we failed our youth. But in his pages there's a glimmer of hope. The children refuse to fail each other. In 1993, Matsumoto penned Tekon Kinkrit, and it flipped the expectations of manga readers on their heads. There were plenty of shonen series at the time that had superpowered boys doing superpowered things, but Matsumoto presented kids leaping over skyscrapers and getting into violent fistfights as mundane, everyday encounters. Our protagonists, the young, naive White, and his older, protective brother Black, are lost boys in Treasure Town's Neverland. They're a scrappy, two-person gang known as the Cats that big-time mobsters know better than to mess with, and they've seemingly existed forever in this twisted cityscape, never needing to grow up to throw down with the best of them. This vibrant, punky city perfectly constructed to play host to the various parkour antics featured in the 600 pages of action, shone with a colour that defied its black and white confines. When I play Jet Set Radio, a game released seven years after Tekon Kinkri's debut, I can't help but see Treasure Town everywhere. In the skewed streets of Tokyo To, its crazy, colourful gangs, the incredible Matsumoto-inspired character designs and the pure energy of its soundtrack. To adapt Tekon Kinkri to film, however, a book that traded in melancholy as much as mischief would take a bittersweet verve and a vision that isn't easily found in Japanese animation. Instead, America responded. Michael Arias was a massive fan of Tekon Kinkrit. After being given a copy a couple of years after its debut, Arias didn't waste much time in trying to adapt the ambitious project to film. After talking with Matsumoto himself, Arias and a small team produced a four-minute demo reel for a CG version of Tekon Kinkrit. This short film garnered plenty of acclaim, but due to a lack of funding and waning interest from heads of production, the pilot never amounted to anything more. Arias didn't let this stop him, however. Six years later, after producing almost the entirety of the Animatrix and with a newly penned English-language screenplay, Arias returned to revive Tekon Kinkrit with a more traditional look.
black and white seem to leap from the pages of Matsumoto's work fully formed, and his style in motion is a sight to behold. Even more impressive, however, is watching them caper around a treasure town finally realised in all the garish colour it deserved. Indeed, this playground come battlefield is arguably the best character in Tech on Concrete, pulsing with as much life as our energetic leads. Reviewing the film, Manola Dargis wonderfully describes Treasure Town as a surreal explosion of skewed angles, leaning towers, hanging wires, narrow alleys and gaudily cute flourishes that bring to mind a Yakuza cityscape by way of a Hello Kitty theme park. Tech on Kingcrete is relentless at times, with a ludicrously short attention span in its opening act. The tale is torn from place to place, group to group, feverishly trying to introduce an audience to each faction and every player before settling in for its story proper. An audience, mind you, who is still trying to get used to this unique visual flair that Tech on Kingcrete presents. The film, however, never really waits for you to catch up, or to catch your breath. Before long we have a madcap highway chase scene, trios of terrifying hitmen hunting our leads, and violent showdowns at the top of tower blocks. At its core, however, is a hell of a lot of heart. Tech on Kingcrete ultimately succeeds because of its characters. Black and White, our upstart, overpowered street rats with a penchant for hitting people with pipes, are lovable despite their proclivity for violence, and it's thanks to smart writing that they're as empathetic as they are. White has never known much else, born into this world and taken under his brother's wing to form a worrying codependency, whilst Black is a guardian thrust much too early into that role, doing what he feels is best for White whilst also wanting to carve out a piece of the city for himself, regardless of the damage he's doing. It's this unshakable bond that's at the centre of things, a dangerous, twisted, but ultimately redemptive bond that shapes every beat of the movie. Even side characters, initially introduced as villains, reveal themselves to have hidden depths. In a movie about violently marking your turf, you'd expect rival gang members or the cops to be the bad guys, but Treasure Town slowly reveals a much deeper infrastructure than you first assume, full of characters you're desperate to get to know, and blow it all that moody loneliness that Matsumoto has made his brand. Relationships, whether brotherhood, mentors and mentees, or lovers, are all fragile, delicate things in Tech on Kingcrete's rough world, a world that doesn't hesitate in straining them until they break free, or break. Tech on Kingcrete did very well, scooping up a heap of awards since its release and garnering a loyal fanbase in the process. It made Michael Arias the first non-Japanese director of a major anime film, and he proved to the Japanese market that he was more than up to the task translating a visual style most directors would understandably be terrified to adapt. Anime. This rich, joyful, multicoloured, multifaceted world that we all love is a perfect parallel to Treasure Town. It's often gaudy and seedy, violent, bloody and cheap, but it's also vibrant, beautiful, alive. Tekon Kincrete is one of the many treasures of the industry because it isn't afraid to ask the question that we, as anime lovers, should always be asking. What is anime? Depending on how we continue to both ask and answer that question, it has the power to change and evolve this medium that we all adore. A medium that has the potential to be one of the most versatile and exciting mediums around. The second we stop asking that question is the second it dies. Thanks for watching. This topic was picked by my backers on Patreon from a bunch of ideas I have for future videos. And if you'd like a say in what I cover next, and a chance to win a copy of Tech on Kingcrete on Blu-ray, head on over and pledge a buck. You'll also get access to a whole load of other cool rewards too, so hit the link in the description to check them out. Otherwise, you can follow me on Twitter or subscribe to me on YouTube to get notified when a new video lands. If instead you're wondering how I made it through videos about Yuasa and Matsumoto without ever discussing ping pong, hit the like button and I'll spank myself with a paddle until I've learnt my lesson.